I cannot find this video, but I'm pretty sure I've made this before and I may have deleted it, but if I have inadvertently posted it, let me know. Um, so we're going to go over this again, validity. I know we've talked about reliability, but the validity of a test or yeah, a test or assessment instrument. Ultimately, with reliability we were talking about is uh, whatever we're measuring, are we doing it consistently? So if we're measuring anxiety, does it measure it consistently? And one of the biggest sources of errors are vague questions. You know, they can be read one way or one time and then a different way the other time. Um, with validity, we're asking the question, are we actually measuring what we say we are measuring? So if we're measuring anxiety or happiness or depression, is that the concept that we're actually measuring? Or is it something else? You know, are we, are we measuring anxiety, but we're actually really measuring um, OCD characteristics? So with validity, that's what we're looking for. And there's, there's not going to be one single way that you validate a test. Now, I will say something that will sound a little confusing is there, we're going to talk about the ways to validate a test or assessment instrument. But as I've mentioned before, when we're talking about working with clients, the client validates the results for themselves. So um, you're collaborating with the interpretation and the client is going to validate whether these results are meaningful or not. Okay, so for instance, if we were working with an intelligence test and looking at that, um, we may find that the person was incredibly anxious when they took the test, they didn't sleep the night before, um, and there's all kind of things that then we would say, hey, that's probably not a valid uh, score for you. Okay, so for results, clients validate that, but when we're looking at validating a test, these are some of the ways that we go about this. Now the first and overriding one is construct validity. And what that means is that oftentimes in the behavioral sciences, such as counseling, we're having to construct a meaning. So when we, when we say we're going to measure happiness, we have to construct a definition of what that is. Um, we, another way to put it is we have to define what that is. So we are constructing a definition. And so when we're talking about construct validity, there's not going to be one single way to determine construct validity. We're going to use all these different kinds of ways to determine construct validity uh, for this definition that we've constructed for happiness or depression or anxiety. Um, and, and purpose in life and just all different other kinds of things um, that aren't, you know, just obvious, overtly obvious. Okay. Um, so one of the first ways that we talk about this is content. Um, I've seen this called face validity. And a way to do content validity is to send your test once you have developed it to experts in the field. And then you would ask them, uh, to read over this test and to, uh, you know, give you feedback uh, is, as if to the extent to which this seems to be measuring what you hope it measures. Uh, so then that way they send back the feedback and then you can make adjustments and so forth uh, to make sure that your questions are really um, uh, focused on what you're wanting to measure. So that's content validity. Um, with criterion validity, there's three different ways uh, or, or facets of criterion validity. The first one is concurrent. And what we're looking for here, let me tell you the purpose of concurrent is it would be nice to give a, um, you know, an electronic test, you know, somebody can complete online or even paper pencil that could then uh, accurately tell us how well somebody could perform a skill. So if I were to use the example, if there was a paper pencil test to tell me how well you're going to do at counseling, then that would save me a lot of time and save you a lot of time from paying all this money for counseling classes and stuff for something that you're not going to do very well at. Um, and, and again, there's a lot to deal with your motivation and stage of change and all that related to that. Okay, so this is the purpose of concurrent validity. So how we might do this with the example I just gave would be that I've got some kind of, we'll just go with paper pencil. We've got a paper pencil test 
to determine how good of a counselor you're going to be. And you take that test and then you immediately, that day, with that, just within minutes of taking that test, you walk into a, uh, in a, a lab and we've got a client that you're going to see. And then we've got three professors behind a, uh, a window watching you and rating you. And then what we're going to do is take your pencil paper test score and the ratings and we're going to and we're going to see if those uh match if if those closely match and that would be concurrent validity okay and so again that can just be incredibly helpful and time saving if we can do that because Getting three people, three professors together to observe you and to rate you and then compile that data and get it in a format to where we can actually compare it, um, that's incredibly time consuming. So it can be really nice if we do have something very simple like a pencil paper or a computerized test that you could take uh, that would be really accurate. Um, you know, with predictive validity, what we're hoping to do is to give you a test that could then predict future performance. Um, one that you see with this is, uh, you know, such as the SAT and the GR and the GREs. And, um, you know, th what we do know with like SATs and GRE is that um, they can predict uh, to some extent, you know, how well you'll do your first semester GPA in college or graduate school. It's not a terribly strong predictor, the ones that I've just mentioned, SAT or ACT or GRE. Um, but that is what we're looking to do, is to try to uh, some type of test now that will help predict how you will do in the future. Um, okay. Treatment validity. Um, this is my favorite, and this is the one that we always need to be really concerned about, is can giving you a test and interpreting it with you collaboratively actually improve your outcome, improve a client's outcome? So could we give a um, test of, and, and I think an example in the book is with a, a career inventory, that you take the career inventory, then sit with the counselor and interpret that, and after that, you feel more career decided uh, and, and questions have been answered. Um, the same could be said for some, uh, you know, a, um, a test dealing with, you know, depression, anxiety, anger, what have you that after you interpret the results, you have a better understanding of what you're dealing with, okay? So that could be considered treatment validity where the test itself is actually treatment in that uh, it improves your confidence or understanding or insight and so that uh, you're feeling better, you know, about yourself in the situation. Convergent validity, you're going to often see this one when you're looking at validating a test. Convergent is if I've got a happiness test that I've created, what I then want to do is compare those results with a well-established test that measures something similar to happiness. So um, uh, maybe I will, you know, go out, there's different ones um, that are out there and I'll have you take my test and then I'll have you take this well-established one and I'll run a correlation analysis and my little r will tell me and I would expect with this, with convergent validity, that we're going to have a um, positive uh, correlation. Okay, uh, so because we would want we would want that these scores are going in kind of in the same direction. With divergent uh, validity, which is sometimes called discriminant validity, we want the opposite. So if I've created a happiness test. I might then want to compare that to a really well-established depression measure because we would expect that to be a negative relationship between happiness and, um, and uh, depression. And so then I would run a correlation analysis. I'd give you the happiness test, I'd give you the depression test, we would enter that data, run a correlation analysis, and we would expect a negative correlation. Okay. So, um, this is just validity, and let me know if you have any questions about this.